All right, welcome to the video number 48. Video number 48 of the Amateur Extra License Exam Study. And now we are going to be talking about the Smith chart. The Smith chart is a mess. So this is just one of those photos I stole from Geeks for Geeks. And it had kind of a decent explanation in picture form of what the Smith chart is. But there's so much more to the Smith chart than just that. I have so many tabs open right now. Which of the following can be calculated using a Smith chart? That is going to be the impedance along transmission lines. So from these particular choices, impedance along transmission lines is what can be calculated using a Smith chart. What type of coordinate system is used in a Smith chart? Now the major coordinate system is resistance circles and reactance arcs. So we have this right here. You have your resistance, which is this guy right here, the straight one, and the reactance ones are running this way. So you have resistance circles and reactance arcs. The outer portion is the reactance axis. And I have another Smith chart right here, and it's just showing different parts of the Smith chart. And of course there's also resistance and then there's the the inverse of that or the uh, reciprocal which is your acceptance and all that stuff. So that's the Smith chart. You can read about it there. There's another site here that uh, found just through Googling that shows more of how to use the Smith chart. That's a little beyond what we need to know, though. So your your answer is resistance circles and reactance arcs. Which of the following is often determined using a, a Smith chart? That can be the impedance and SWR values in transmission lines. So a lot of this is about transmission lines. Where, what are the two families of circles and arcs that make up a Smith chart? Resistance and reaction, reactance. So that goes back to right here. Resistance circles, reactance arcs. Resistance and reactance. Resistance is in circles, reactance is in arcs. Which of the following is a common use for a Smith chart? That's to determine the length and position of an impedance matching stub. So from these choices, you can, you can determine the length and position of an impedance matching stub. On the Smith chart shown in figure E9-3, what is the name for the large outer circle on which the reactance arcs terminate? Remember what that was? Reactance arcs terminate at the reactance axis. So we have that right here, reactance axis. This is an ARRL file. You should be able to find this with a quick Google search or internet search. On the Smith chart shown in figure E9-3, what is the only straight line shown? And that is your resistance axis. That is this guy right here. That's your resistance axis. And there's a reason I have this here. We'll close that one. You can see right here, this is resistance straight across here. And there's circles that intersect that for your straight line resistance. So if you see the only straight line, resistance. How is the Smith chart normalized? Reassign the prime center's impedance value. I, could, I can't help you with a way to remember that. It's normalized by reassigning the prime center's impedance value. 
What third family of circles is often added to a Smith chart during the process of designing impedance matching networks? And that's constant SWR circles. And so you can see here's the one to one circle is dead center. The two to one SWR circle is right here. You can see it passes through the two and the 0.5 uh, because this is resistance. But then you got uh, a five to one way out here and infinity is on the outer portion. So constant SWR circles are added. What do the arcs on a Smith chart represent? Well, remember the arcs are reactants. Arc reactants. That's a good mnemonic. Arc reactants. Because you can't spell reactants without arc. Okay? Best I can points with constant reactants. So as we looked at the, the picture, these are your reactants components. You have inductive at the top and capacitive at the bottom. And there's your resistive component right in the middle. In what units are the wavelength scales on a Smith chart calibrated they are in fractions of transmission line electrical length. Now it's going to take me a minute to figure out which one that is. That's this outer circle right here, our transmission lengths. But I had one that actually explained it. And I'll be darned if I can't find it now. Was it on this? Okay, so I did have that one. I promise I had that one up here. And now I don't see it. I was zoomed in really close to it, too. Um, was it on this one? No. Okay. Well, I had a picture of it. Don't know what I did with it. It was up here. Uh, this was another one that I found. Maybe it was on this one. It, it's so tiny you couldn't even hardly see it. But I did have, have it zoomed in really close so you could see the wavelengths on there and this one's a pretty good article um, if you want to get really really deep with what you can do with the smith chart and i'm wasting your time and mine so i'm going to carry on okay so the scales are in fractions of transmission line electrical wavelength and that was the last question on this particular section most of these are are pretty relatable and you, you should be able to remember those pretty easy we have two more videos left in this series two more videos and then we're good for four years but i hope you are doing well with your studies i hope that the ones that i am able to shed some light on have helped you immensely with the smith chart so I'm going to leave you with one more haunting image as we exit the Smith Jar. I'm Robbie W1RCP73. We're almost done.